it was through no planning. Um, I, I got a couple of messages via Twitter as soon as Boris shut the schools uh, from parents who didn't know each other, maybe five or six messages saying, would you mind setting some tasks to my kids? Because we like the show, we want to get involved. Could you set us a task? And, and it was uh, immediately obvious that's a good idea because we, we shut down filming the week before because of lockdown. So I was at home with my kids. I've got three kids who are at primary school who I was struggling to entertain. So it was fully formed immediately. We called it home tasking because we were distracting ourselves from homeschooling. And, uh, and I put one, I think the thing that did change, I, I thought maybe I'll do one every day throughout lockdown. And that very quickly changed to two a week because um, it, it took off in, in a fairly big way. So I was flooded with responses. So, so I put up a task on YouTube, which was simply me talking to my phone, wearing my Taskmaster outfit. And I said, um, uh, throw some, a piece of paper into the bin. Most impressive throw wins you have one day. And, uh, and just watch the entries come in. People put up their entries on Twitter and then we put a montage of the best ones on YouTube. That's how we use the technology. And then Greg Davis, the taskmaster, I'm only his assistant, uh, also got involved and he judged them and put up his own video of uh, choosing the winner and they got some points. And that's it. And we, we did that for three months, I think, altogether throughout lockdown till the schools were, well, till uh, summer holiday came really and I needed a break. And when it come back, are you going to continue with it? Yes, so it was designed for people who had kids at home. So mm. it was a way of distracting them. But actually we found that people who lived by themselves did it, old people did it, young people who weren't at school, and people who were at school did it as well, primary schools did it with um, kids of key workers. So it is going to come back. But we, we are now back to filming, so it's, we're going to do it as a once a month thing from now on and see how that goes. It, it's all, you know, we're all in the dark here. We don't know how long things are going to last. But it was so much fun and it got such a, a wholesome response, I suppose, that it would be a real shame not to. OK, Greg, um, just give us an example of, of what you've done during lockdown with your science videos. And also just give me a sense, could you? of the arc of engagement, i.e. does it start high and get lower? Does it start low and get higher? Or does it plateau? What's your experience? So um, on day one of lockdown, myself and my partner, Maddie Moat, uh, who is a fellow TV presenter, fellow science communicator. Uh, she's not here because she's filming at the moment uh, and somewhere without data. So uh, you've just got me, I'm afraid, sorry about that. Um, so the two of us decided, um, you know, we live together, we're a couple. We thought, right, on day one, we're gonna launch uh, a daily family science show. Uh, which we called Let's Go Live. Um, and we decided that on Friday night. And then over the weekend, I kind of quickly worked out, you know, learned all about encoders and software. And basically, how could I set up a multi-cam live studio in our spare room? Um, and we'd already been doing stuff on YouTube anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Me mainly for BBC Earth and, and Maddie for BBC Earth and other people as well. So we thought, right, we'll do this on Maddie's channel, which we use for educational content. So there was already a subscriber base. There was a subs base there already. Um, we kind of asked, asked our audiences on Twitter and, and such, you know, would this be useful? And it was a resounding and very loud yes. Uh, you know, because as Alex said, you know, faced with homeschooling, um, especially for people who aren't necessarily as versed in, in science or in whatever subject. Um, so we made uh, daily for, yeah, three plus months, 55 uh, live half hour shows, um, each one packed with facts and fun and quizzes and, and the big thing was activities so we did loads and loads of hands-on activities that families could do together um, and that was a that was a big thing in terms of engagement that we really saw it wasn't just kids doing it like on a table in the corner it was whole families you know from four-year-olds to 13 year olds doing um you know making a, a ping pong cannon or or, or, or making poo uh, a model of poo or, or whatever it was depending on whatever we were um whatever we were investigating and engagement wise your question uh it started um bigger than we thought it would um and then over the first week it really grew uh, mm. and we were absolutely astonished by week two um we were getting because every show was live um you know we were getting eight ten thousand uh plays 
um, live. And of course, we know that that is, is a whole family watching. Um, and then, yeah, it grew and then come kind of post Easter when, when it eased, it dropped a little bit, but uh, we still got the watchbacks. So um, yeah, it was quite a surprise and a wonderful thing. And just give us a sense of that multi-camera shoot. Are we talking three iPhones and a, a mic in the middle sort of thing? Yeah, so um, classic uh, USB microphone going straight in. Um, we had a few DSLRs that were already could feed USB into the, into the laptop. Um, lots of people have been using OBS. I was using something else called Ecamm, mm. uh, which allowed me to essentially live vision mix. So we're both in shot. We're both kind of co-presenting. Uh, we've got our notes. I've got a wide DSLR as a two shot. I've got another DSLR that's acting as a table cam. And then as we went through, I incorporated um, infrared camera, USB camera. Um, we had a bird cam, which was set up on the windowsill, uh, you know, zoomed in on, on some bird feeders outside. And it was, it was awesome, you know, as, as we were both hosting it, I was able to kind of live vision mix and jump between the cameras um, on my laptop, um, whilst having, you know, live chat come up and dropping loads of, you know, pitch, pictures in pictures and, and all of that at the same time. Fantastic. And no editing, of course. No editing, no, which is, you know, well, there was because we started adding in VTs as well. Okay. Um, and the whole thing just quickly, you know, ex exploded, you know, as, as Alex was saying, a daily show is is bonkers and it was bonkers uh we worked out basically it was about 17 hours a day every day for the first 100 days um but it, it seemed to be you know we were doing it you know we weren't doing it for money there wasn't there wasn't a sponsor there wasn't money we were just purely doing it for the audience and it and it and it, and it landed and it seemed to be really helpful to give them engaging activities for every afternoon fantastic greg thanks very much back to you in a, in a second let's go to to emma keitha and and the national theaters experience and, and this one became national news, Emma, when you sort of announced that these big shows are going to be made available on YouTube. Uh, and I think a show like One Man, Two Governors of Comedy, starring James Corden, got over two million viewers. Were you astonished by the response or were you expecting it? Yeah, I mean, com completely astonished, if I'm honest with you. Um, it was it was a really quick decision for us once theatres were shut down of, of how do we keep engaging audiences? How do we reach them when we can't have physical productions on? Um, unfortunately, we had the NT Live catalogue, which, as you said, is our, our programme, which goes out into cinemas. And we thought, right, what can we do with this? And YouTube was the, just the obvious fit. It meant it could go onto our channel. Um, what was really important for us as well was that we tried to create some of that theatricality as part of it. So we used uh, YouTube's premiere function. So we released all of our titles seven o'clock on a Thursday. That's typically when our titles are available in cinemas. That's kind of our slot. Um, and actually it really was amazing to see how many people came together to watch. So like you say, something like One Man, Two Governors, uh, two million people over the course of a week. They were only up for, for a week. Um, but about 250,000 of those were watching at seven o'clock on Thursday. Uh, and that's just uh, a phenomenal number of people and, and far in excess of anything that we, we thought might have been possible when we very quickly scrabbled to get this idea together at the end of March. And what about the other shows, Emma? Were they as successful or did you, did you find that once the, sort of the, the press interest uh, had, had dissipated that, that the audiences tailed off somewhat? Uh, no, actually, in, in fact, the complete opposite, if I'm honest. Um, we launched initially with four titles. We ended up doing 17 overall, um, and the interest really sustained throughout. Um, of course, there were, there were titles that were more popular and, and some that were slightly less popular, um, but actually, overall, it was, it was really strong throughout, um, and it was 15 million views across the whole programme. So what we tried to do with the programming as well was make sure we were showcasing a bit of everything that the National Theatre has on. So there was a real range of programming and actually what that did was bring a range of audiences to the content as well. So it wasn't just the same audience coming back 17 weeks, it was different audiences. And what was unusual for us to see as well was the amount of interaction on like the live chat, on Twitter, throughout, because normally when you're in the theatre, it's not, really, it's not really the done thing to sit on your phone chatting away. Um, but actually the, the way in which the audience were engaged and wanted to talk to us and to other people watching during the show, it's just something you don't get in the live environment. And that's really, uh, was really kind of astounding to us how much people wanted to, to talk about and to express opinions about what, what the, the shows were.